Unicorn Hunters is not a financial advisor or broker. It showcases potential unicorns on its show, but we do not make any representations or guarantees about their future value. All investments have significant risks. If you choose to invest in a company presented on Unicorn Hunters, it will be between you and the company. Get ready, world, for a whole new way to invest. Introducing the Unicorn Hunters. We are talking about a cultural and economic shift. A savvy group of investors whose only job is to provide an unvarnished assessment of who they think can become the next unicorn. Still trying to come up with an idea of what actually your product is. Sex sells, my friend, sex sells. <laughs> what would you do with that extra $20 million? Meet the circle of money. Our unicorn hunters, Steve Wozniak, co-founder of Apple. I am in and I'm going to invest. Mo Vella, attorney, business consultant, and two-term White House senior advisor. Everyone has a place at the table. Sylvina Moschini, international entrepreneur and CEO of SheWorks. I believe in you and I'm going to invest. Lance Bass, boy band phenom, businessman, and venture fund investor. One word I love is disruptive, and this is that. Scott Livingston, a securities expert known as the king of nanotechnology on Wall Street. We all know why we're here. We're here to meet the next unicorn opportunity. Rosie Rios, financial wizard and former treasurer of the United States, with her signature on over $1.7 trillion of U.S. currency. This could be a game changer for a lot of families. Alex Konyanikin, a serial entrepreneur, author, and CEO of Transparent Business. I'm going to invest. Together with you, they're on the hunt for the next unicorn. Today, we're creating new stories for new people, new opportunities for new investors. And for those of you at home who have always felt like you don't have access to early stage investments, I think you're gonna find that the Unicorn Hunters can be a game changer in giving you access to these opportunities. But you always have to remember not to overextend yourself or risk funding that you can't afford to lose. So make sure that you've taken the time to explore the Unicorn Hunters website and to do your own due diligence. All right, enough talk. Mount up. Let's hear more about this unicorn. Let's do it. Do it. PJ Piper is a serial entrepreneur, board member, and investment banker with over 25 years of experience who has started the next exciting growth company in nanotechnology. He's leading the charge to research, develop, and commercialize far ultraviolet technologies to eradicate the world of infectious disease. As a principal investigator on NASA and U.S. Air Force contracts, he has proven the microbiological efficacy of krypton disinfection lighting on multiple pathogens. His goal is to unlock the value of game-changing technologies and applications that will make the world a better place. My name is PJ Piper, and I'm the founder and CEO of Far UV Technologies. COVID-19 has been a stark reminder about the biological threats all around us. Social distancing, face masks, hand hygiene have all helped slow the spread of COVID-19, but they've not stopped it. Even our vaccines are only additional layers of defense. And unfortunately, Defense isn't gonna cut it because the only time you can actually shed your face mask is when the viral load has been reduced enough that it's safe again to do so. So this implies a common sports analogy that perhaps the best defense is actually an offense. For over 100 years, we've known about a spectrum of light that can destroy any virus, bacteria, or fungus. It's why over 50% of all of our drinking water and over 70% of all of our hospital operating rooms are disinfected with ultraviolet light. The only reason germicidal light 
isn't used everywhere all the time is that it hasn't been suitable for extended use in occupied settings. Until now. Far UV Technologies has developed Krypton disinfection lighting, which at narrower 222 nanometer wavelengths that simply cannot penetrate the skin or the eyes, making it now safe for use in occupied settings, while interestingly enough, is even more effective at destroying the pathogens that plague us today. The best use of Krypton disinfection technology is actually in a ceiling fixture. And this is a ceiling fixture. It looks a lot like a smoke detector. It goes on the ceiling and you don't notice it after the second day. It's a set it and forget it solution. And it autonomously and continually disinfects the air around us that we're breathing and any of the surfaces that we're touching. If a ceiling fixture is not your preferred method because you don't have time, you can always use our Krypton shield which is an immediately deployable floor lamp and can still provide the equivalent of an N95 mask to all occupants in the space. Far UV Technologies has had contracts with NASA, the Air Force, the very top levels of the Pentagon, multiple different corporates and even sovereign nations, all who have proved out the safety, efficacy and cost effectiveness of this solution. Far UV Technologies is private, profitable, and growing at over 10,000% annually into $3.4 trillion of immediately addressable markets. We are offering $20 million of equity in what we believe will be the only round of capital that we ever raise before an IPO or an initial public offering. However, more recently, we heard probably the eight most glorious words an entrepreneur has ever heard the government say about a problem they're having and a solution that we have. And those eight words were $1.9 trillion COVID relief Ooh, bill. Nice. Wow, wow, interesting. Mm -hmm. So COVID-19 has been a stark reminder of the biological threats all around us. The next deadly pathogen that is expected based on current trends to arrive within the next 12 months. Mm. I would like to personally invite you to join our mission to eradicate the pathogens that lead to global disease for good. Thank you so much for your time and I look forward to answering any questions you might have. That was a very impressive presentation. You know how to talk to investors. Tell them that you don't really even need their money. Right. I know. <laughs> so you are cash positive. Correct. On um, what level? What is the level of your revenues so far? We typically have about net margins of about 40% with about a million dollars of free cash flow. Sorry, PJ, what, what do you need the 20 mil for? When we think about the concept of how fast we need to grow, we've been doubling our sales and production capacity every two to three months to just address the almost insatiable demand that we already have for our products. We're going through new design cycles, also every 75 to 90 days, to address the things we're learning with our customers. We're now working with states, school boards, uh, of course our defense background has been probably one of our, our biggest customers to date. And so we need to address working capital because our ability to double, this could maybe take us two or three generations further down that kind of incremental iteration. So PJ, let's talk about your infrastructure. Tell us where you are today and tell us where you think $20 million is gonna take you. Sure. Uh, we have probably the most experienced team in Far UV in the world in terms of applications development, engineering. We have a relatively small sales force and their ability to cover even the, the people responding from hopefully this unicorn show is gonna be very taxed. So we have to continue to build out our sales and marketing team and continue to build out additional products, some really fascinating PJ, stuff. I need to know about your competition because I can assume that there's a lot of people trying to do the yeah. same thing. How can you tell us that this is gonna be the one that the government wants to do contracts sure. with? First and foremost, um, we've been in the market the longest. More importantly, since we started with multiple SBIR awards, NASA, Air Force, we're actually granted a preferred supplier status to any federal agency. And so that comes in a few different forms. The carrot is that they're allowed to sole source through us versus put it into a competitive bid situation. Um, the second aspect is a little bit different. In addition to providing a carrot, Congress provided a stick. 
which is that any other competitor to us actually has to file a form with the SBA saying why they're not using our device and using someone else's. Now, are there any competitors with patents that might inhibit your growth? Not that we're aware of. We've done a pretty extensive landscape opinion, and then we have also filed several patents ourselves. They're four years through the process. It takes longer for the USPTO to actually issue them. And we also have a patent and technology licensing agreement with Boeing, which expands our patent portfolio by about another 20 patents. So there's a few advantages there. There's also a really, really exciting thing that just happened this last week. And we have been issued national stock numbers by the Defense Logistic Agency for this product, this product, and a Krypton 36, which can disinfect up to 36 foot ceiling heights, gymnasiums, entryways, all kinds of tall ceiling applications. I have a question for you as a regulatory attorney and the former CFO to two vice presidents of the United States and the White House. Yes. Does this require FDA approval or authorization of any kind? Is this considered a medical device or is this a consumer product? And the answer is no, we are not a medical device. We do not claim to cure COVID. What we do is we destroy the pathogens that are on the particles that come out of somebody's mouth. We don't intend to be used on people either. So we're not having like portals or things right. like that that would potentially raise the specter of is this an FDA right. uh, regulated device. So we discussed this with the FDA and they said, no, you are not a medical device. You are regulated by the EPA, the Environmental Protection Agency, mm -hmm. as a pesticidal device. PJ, yes. you said you're raising $20 million. For what percentage of far UV is that? That would be 20%. PJ, one, one important thing, because you need to move fast in a very large market that is very time sensitive, and you need to manufacture a device. How does the production line and the time to market look like for that? This is an electronic device. So we have some special sauce in the light bulb and in the power supply and in the programming that we embed into it. But all of those things, we can have third party fabricated. So much in the same way the larger electronics manufacturers don't really make their own devices, we're gonna be the same way. And as a result, the large companies that service those have already confirmed that yes, we've got you right now up to 10,000 units per month if you're interested in, and we can potentially deliver a million units in 2021 if you so choose. So to be clear, you outsource the manufacturing? Yes. Okay. What is the device currently and in the future? Yeah, so this device right here costs $2,500. And we have the higher ceiling device right now is $49.99. Why is it $2,500? Is there some component that's... Yeah, the components right now are still expensive. And so far, you know, we started around the concept of, let's get this out there quick. What's our cost to build our first ones? We didn't want to lose money. So you're primarily selling to business and government, but can I buy a couple of these from my house? Well, actually, that was part of the reason we designed the Krypton Shield, the floor lamp. I mean, I was just thinking, you know, hey, my kid's teacher, came down with COVID, right? They send all the kids home. Everybody's got a 10 day quarantine. What are you gonna do? You're just gonna accept the fact that now you're close contact and hopefully everything's well. But this device could actually follow the child into their bedroom, follow them out to the dining room. And the interesting thing was the first people who actually asked for this were dentists. They wanted to take it in between different operatories. And we were like, that's a good idea. We're just not sure there's a market for it. And then the more we realized this is actually great. This can be used yeah. in vaccination stations. This can be used in a lot of places. And all you have to do is plug it in the wall. As someone that is prone to MRSA, I've had it so many times in my life. I need this in my home. What are the studies and what's the research on the health of this? You know, we had a lot of inquiries that said, oh, you know, I've heard UV is bad since my mom told me to put sunscreen on. And the reality is it's a very misunderstood part of the spectrum. There are very different types of UV. A UVB, which comes from the sun, is a type that can give you skin cancer. UVC, which is traditional ultraviolet light, can get into the epidermis, but doesn't go anywhere near as deep as sunlight. So in sunlight, in five minutes, you're gonna have the equivalent of many lifetimes of this. Can this make you tan? No. <laughs> okay. Uh, <laughs> also, as can we work on that? <laughs> so you got the thing up on the ceiling, or you're shining the light down, right? Like, how do I know it's working? Effectively, that ability to know exactly what it kills at this distance, if I know it's gonna kill everything on my hand in one minute, in the labs, there's a question of, does it play that way out in reality? 
unfortunately, for surfaces, yes, it's exact. It plays out exactly like that uh, in reality. For air, it's a little bit more complicated. We happen to have specialists who specialize in computational fluid dynamics, which is measuring the air as it goes around the room, and how often is it at every given grid point to determine how much has been disinfected. Think of this as just shooting out photons, which are destroying the P pathogens. PJ, but going back to the business, how far are you from providing a liquidity event for the potential investors? Your earlier question is directly related to that, which is how much money do we really need to sell a trillion dollars of this? or to sell billions of dollars of this. If you look at our production capacity, if we can make and sell a million of these this year, we will have exceeded a billion dollars of sales. And then it becomes a very high quality problem as to how you scale from there when you're at the margins that we're looking at. That said, again, it's not as much does this work, it's are people aware of it? I bet most of you here weren't even aware of what this was going on and our ability to hit this I view Unicorn Hunters as a big step in the right direction. Tens of thousands of viewers, but an IPO could get that much more brand awareness out there and get every person on a school board and every person at a transit authority and every doctor and nurse that can be protected by this can start demanding it. And what wow. is your projected income if everything goes planned for the end of this year and for the next uh, year? You know, every bone in my body wants to be conservative but I'm also need to weigh that against the opportunity cost of not being aggressive enough. And I, you know, I would say our guidance right now is anywhere from 20 to $200 million in revenue. But in yep. theory, if we get the orders that we're targeting, and we've got former FEMA directors, mm -hmm. we've got multiple congressmen and senators that we're going, look, we can't even touch a candle to what you guys can bring to the table. And we're doing pretty well, but I think our opportunity is to exceed 200. So with all those contacts and with the passage of the American Relief Plan, have you thought about a rebate program? You mean through the government? Yes. Oh, I would love that. Because the bill wasn't necessarily written for us. Right. We just happen to fit yeah, it really Yeah, but it's going to be an ancillary benefit for your company. By the way, sometimes the government doesn't know what they need. And they don't sometimes know exactly how to work with companies like yours. And, you gotta and we're to hoping that some of you can join us to right help. There. Listen, you got the guy right there. It connects all the dots. It gets you to scale at a much better rate. And mm -hmm. obviously, you, you have a, a preemptive solution. You came and walked in with a solution yeah. for the problem. Yeah. Have you considered offering your technology to restaurants? Restaurants got over $50 billion of relief funding. And it's super easy to do with this because it's just immediately deployable. We were talking to a restaurant and they said, that sounds pretty expensive. We're just going to hire a minimum wage person to wipe down all the tables. I said, all right, well, how long are you open? 10 hours. I'm like, okay, so how much are you paying them? Well, their minimum wage, I don't know, it's like $100 a day. All right, ours is going to last three and a half to four years and we can finance it. You're under $2 a day to protect your people and they're not going to miss spots. You and know, by the way, you should still have clinic. the person wiping down the surfaces, but this is like the defense behind the, the defense, right? We're not going to get rid of the ketchup smudges, right? So you're still going to wipe down <laughs> in, in between, but you're not going to hire a person to sit there and wipe down, assuming that you're doing this, especially when that isn't treating the air at all. If you're wiping down a surface, you're not treating the air at all. Are you also selling international? And do they get the same price? They do. When COVID hit, actually, some of our international uh, customers were more progressive in moving on this than they were here in the States. There was a lot of confusion at the beginning. Oh, is this gonna blow over? We're not really sure. Let's give it another couple months and see what happens. If you look at the last 12 years, SARS, That's right. MERS, Ebola, COVID-19, That's right. each of those were three years apart. And you work on all of them? We work on all of them, of course. Let's get strategic here. So you're asking for $20 million. Yes. $20 million is 20,000 people pledging $1,000. Let's pretend you get $40 million. What would you do with that extra $20 million? The issue is, is can we deliver a million of these tomorrow? No, we're at 10,000 a month. But I want to build the capacity to 100,000 a month, and our suppliers of the different components are all on board. Having that additional capital gives them greater confidence. And they have the capability to do that. To lend us the, okay. yes. How quickly have the can you get there? We've, in our discussions with our component providers, we can get up to a million units this year. PJ, thank you so much. We're gonna ask you to step away. And by the way, I want you to leave the dad gum thing here because 
<laughs> It'll protect us while you're gone, okay? We got the freebie. We'll look forward to talking to you again in a few minutes. Great. Thank, Thank you, you, everyone. Thank you so much. Thanks again. Well, I'm excited. So many different opportunities that I can think of, even that they just brought up in terms of the government. You know, we've done well with the government, but I feel we're just scratching the surface and it's only proven, you know, in this brief conversation. I really hope we're lucky enough to get them more involved. All right, guys. All right. I am the newbie investor here, so I'm going to rely a lot on you. But did they check the boxes for you? I'm looking at the eyes around here. All different oh, kinds yeah, of people, boxes. and everywhere I'm sensing is positive, positive, yeah. and all the check boxes are marked. Well, right it was here. believe. I believe it too. Yeah. I mean, he invented Apple, so. Yeah. <laughs> Far be it for me not to follow the Waz's lead. Large potential market, huge, limited competition, barriers to entry, government support. Everybody yeah. wants it. Those are the boxes I was looking Solves for. Solves that problem. Is this how all the unicorns are gonna be? Because that was really incredible and so needed right now. But I only have one concern. It was the price point. That's all yeah. I, so Rosie's idea of a rebate or some type of a subsidy program, that'll get me past that concern. Yeah. That was the only concern I had was. Don't worry about the price more. Why? Uh, I noticed that he ignited uh, engineering curiosity of wars. Oh. So by the end of the week, was is going to develop a device like this only at 10% version. price. You know, a lot of times, though, products came out that were seemed to be very expensive for yes. what they were, including the Tesla Model S. And where is Tesla as a car man company in the world? Yeah. I just worry about accessibility. That's yes. my only concern, right? And I the think, average consumer. But there's two aspects. There's investors and there's people who want it or yeah. you know, mm -hmm. companies, uh, institutions that want it. And I think it was, he did a very positive job for me on all regards. Yeah. Yeah. I, I agree, but look, I need to understand his experience a little bit more. Has he run a PL? How can he really get this to where it needs to go? Yeah. So are we ready to bring PJ back into the circle of money? Let's yeah, let's do it. Yeah, let's do yeah. it. Back in here. Hey, welcome back, PJ. PJ, we are gonna give you 60 seconds to do your final elevator pitch. Let's count it down. Krypton disinfection lighting is very exciting and important to me. Uh, I've had a passion to try to change the world ever since I left investment banking back in 2000. And while I've done a lot of things uh, to accelerate new projects and products and opportunities in clean technology, this is the first one where I can look at the data and realize that more than one in three of all people in history, in our recorded history, have died from infectious disease. And it feels now like we finally have a solution. And if we can deliver even a fraction of that, it would be probably the most rewarding thing I can possibly think of. I'm so excited to have the opportunity to present to such a, uh, an esteemed and diverse panel. Uh, and I hope that both you um, I'm looking forward to working with many of you who are already in and hopefully the rest who are still uh, finishing their due diligence. And uh, certainly all the viewers who have, who have joined as well. We're very interested in hearing from you as well. Zero. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Excellent job. It's time for our panelists to make a move. And Mo, we're going to start with you. Are you in? I was conflicted. But I'll tell you something. The world needs your product. And a life sometime is about timing. Yeah. I'm in, PJ. Great. Thank you. I'm in too, PJ. I, I love it. I think there is a lot of opportunity for your products here. Thank you. I really want to be in. I think it's a great product. I want to do a little bit more homework, but it sounds really compelling. Thank you. Yeah. You know, I got lots of clients that are going to be interested in this type of an investment. I'm going to be sending them to the website to do their research but I have a feeling you're gonna be pretty happy with the results. Right. PJ, my thoughts are extremely positive. It's a little difficult to deliberately slow down a little because I'm so excited inside. It hits me from an investment point of view, from a wanting it myself point of view, and I am known by my friends as a non-investor, but I am going to, I'm in. Awesome. This time. Great, yeah. thank you. And I'm with Rosie. Uh, I need to do a little bit more research. I'm 90% in, but I think this is incredible. Awesome. Thank you. Well, honestly, I'm torn. But I'm impressed by what you've done so far. And I believe that with the additional funding, 
you can corner a very large market. Yes, great. Thank you so much. PJ, thank you so much for that powerful and insightful presentation. Thank you, thank you, thank you for the job. Yeah. Thank you very much. It's awesome. Thank you. Thank you, PJ. Thank, 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 thank you, everyone. Thank you, PJ. Thank you. Thank you. Take all my money. Take it all. <laughs> the amazing thing is that I can see it in every hospital, every schoolroom, every home. <laughs> you know what I was interested in was he had a pretty clear path to this being the first and last money in before a potential IPO. And to me, that's very compelling. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This investment is really going to turbocharge a lot of our efforts. But more than anything, being on Unicorn Hunters has really expanded our network. It's epic. The concept of eradicating disease is a real opportunity for us to change the world. We have the solution, and now the question is, can we roll it out to the people that really need it most? And now it is time for all of you to decide. Remember to connect with us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, and share this opportunity with your friends. On behalf of myself and all my fellow panelists, I wanna thank you for watching. And this investment is live online, so do your homework. And until we meet again, what are we? Unicorn Hunters! Thank you very much, that was awesome. Yeah. Unicorn Hunters is not a financial advisor or broker. It showcases potential unicorns on its show, but we do not make any representations or guarantees about their future value. All investments have significant risks. If you choose to invest in a company presented on Unicorn Hunters, it will be between you and the company.